Hey everybody, welcome back to CSS 3 in 30 Days. Today is day 16 and we are going to be making a modal window in only CSS 3. A modal window is that pop-up window that you see on websites to subscribe to something or to give you a notification, uh, an alert of some sort. It uh, It's commonly used in Bootstrap and other frameworks like that. It's just a modal window. It pops up in front of your screen to, to alert you of something or request something of you. Typically, it's built in JavaScript or jQuery or the like, which requires you to learn those languages or download a plugin or learn a specific framework, which is not a big deal. But this course is about making things only in CSS3, pushing the boundaries of CSS3, or at least pushing your boundaries of what you think CSS3 can do. And in this case, we're gonna just make a modal window only in CSS3. Now, what's the benefit of that? Well, you don't have to do it in J uh, JavaScript or jQuery or anything like that. You don't have to add that extra step. But also this means that if the person viewing your website or your application does not have JavaScript activated or installed or uh, whatever on their browser, and sometimes that's the case, then it still will appear because it's only CSS. So that's pretty neat. Let's jump in and let me show you what that looks like. Here's day 16 CSS only modal window. We have the sandbox with our uh, content here, which will turn into the modal window, as you could see, with the close button and such. But down here in the final result, you can see if we click to launch modal, it will pop up just like so. Nice little animation, a little background overlay, the, co the body content, just some text, and then a close button, which also closes the modal window. So let's jump into our code editor. Download 16 modal window, I'll give you a moment to do that, pause the video, come back here when you're ready. Check out the index file. There's a few things that I want to note here and explain because the markup is very important in this lesson. We're not gonna be coding the markup, but you need to understand how it works because it's crucial in how the CSS functions in this case. So let's scroll down here and I will show you, we have a input. The first thing you see here under the, the H4, an input. Uh, and that input is a checkbox with the ID of click, but the style is display none. So this input makes everything happen. So we're gonna hide this input because we don't need to see it, but the state of the input, whether it is checked or unchecked, is what's going to determine if our modal window appears or not. The label here wraps an A tag, uh, which is a button, but the label it has the attribute of four click, which is tying into this input right here. So when we click on this label, so when we click on the button and we're actually clicking the label because that's the parent, it's going to activate or check slash uncheck. It will toggle this checkbox. Now, if I, if I, you know, remove this, let me just show you, remove the style, you'll see a checkbox. And if I click this, it's going to check and uncheck it. And also this down here is going to do the same. And that is very important. So I'm going to style display none. So down here we have the div with the ID or class of modal and just another div with the content and some uh, markup that's just for styling purposes. But another functionality element here is the label for click. That is that ID of click up here, that checkbox. And then again, just a button with the class of close that toggles that input as well. And then down below that as a sibling of the modal element, we have the div with the class of overlay. And that will be that black overlay that we use. And really that is it. So, when you click on the label for ID right here, when you click on this button, it's going to toggle this input. When you click on the close button, it will also toggle the input. In CSS, we can check to see if, a, if an input, a checkbox, is checked or otherwise, which means we can style based on that attributes being checked or not. So jump into your final.css, if you want to refer to these styles, you always can, as in every lecture, every lesson, we have a final.css file where you can go through and see. The only difference is in the final files, it's going to be prepended with final double underscore and then the class. And that's simply because the, the styles, the final styles under the final result are on the same page as the sandbox. And I don't want to have conflicting styles and have when I style one thing, style everything. So I have a separate uh, class or ID for each of the elements, but the difference is the final elements, the final results start with final double underscore. So that's what you'll see in the final CSS in every lesson. 
So that's there for your reference, as long as you keep in mind the, the prepending final double underscore. Now let's jump into our sandbox.css. And what we're gonna do here is start coding up our style. So let's the, the first thing we're gonna do is code up that overlay, and we're simply gonna say position fixed, top zero, and left, right, and bottom are all gonna be zero. That just tells the position fixed element that it's gonna be connected to all four sides because a fixed position kind of jumps it up to the top top left, so you need to position it specifically so it knows to stretch itself. Z index, 99, that's just going to put it in front of everything on the page for the most part. Background, we're gonna say, I'm gonna go double, triple zero, flat black. Pointer events, this specific selector it specifies, it says right here, right on the on the code editor, specifies under what circumstances, if any, a particular graphic element can become the target of mouse events. So our overlay, we don't actually want it to be the target of a mouse event. So we want to be able to click through it. We don't want it to, to conflict with if we want to click something. So the, the overlay you can, sorry, the pointer events you can have set to auto or none or any number of different events. In fact, if you just check here in mozilla.org for the developer page, you can see the syntax of pointer events. Basically, if you choose auto, the element behaves as if, if, if the pointer events property were not specified at all, so just default. And none, the element is never the target of mouse events. That simply means if you click it, it shouldn't register as anything. So, and we're just doing that for, uh, just to prevent any issues with uh, clicking, the overlay being on top of different things. It's very likely we could not have the pointer events style in there at all, and it would be fine on some browsers but uh, we have that in there specifically to, to avoid any conflict with click events. So pointer events, none for the overlay because we don't wanna be able to have it register as a click event when we click on it. Opacity, zero, we don't wanna see it. WebKit transform, we're gonna scale it, we're gonna make it half the size. So that scale is 0 0.5. We're gonna put this as transform as a browser cross compatibility scale 0.5. So it's half the size right now, but you can't see it because its opacity is zero. Now, let's move along. We're gonna style the input with the type of checkbox, so our magical checkbox, but the checked state of it. So that checkbox with the checked state, this is the style that we're gonna do. But we're gonna use a general sibling combinator. This little character means any sibling of this element. So not necessarily just the adjacent sibling. So if there was an input and then right below it, that's an adjacent sibling, as long as they're siblings, in fact. It could be any sibling that I specify within the, the document tree, not necessarily an adjacent one. So we're gonna select overlay. So basically when, this, when the input is checked, I'm actually gonna be selecting the overlay sibling. Pointer events, auto for this. Opacity, let's do 0 0.9. I'm gonna go WebKit transform, scale that to one, and I'm going to do that again here for cross compatibility on the browsers. And then what we're gonna do is WebKit transition. We're going to, to transition the transform at 0 0.5 seconds and ease. And we're going to transition the opacity at 0 0.5 seconds with an ease. Copy that, paste it out, remove WebKit, simply for cross-browser cross compatibility. That should do that. Okay, so let's save that and see what happens. Now, if I refresh and I click on click to launch modal, we have our overlay slides up nice, and just like so, but I can't remove it because there's no way for me to, to remove it. And that's something that we are actually gonna start to do here. So below that, we're actually gonna style the modal and we're going to say position fixed, top 50%, left 50%, Z index 100. We're going to do some WebKit transform here. We're going to translate, which is the X and Y position on the screen. Negative 50, negative 50, and then scale 0 0.5, so half the size. Now, if I save that, let's see what it looks like so far. So you can see it here, it's 50% of the size, and it's negative 50%, negative 50%. If I were to change this to 50% and 50%, let's see what happens. It's somewhere down here. So the negative 50, negative 50 is the 
uh, is the position of it. So it's actually right dead center, as you can see, but it's half the size. We're going to scale it up once it's activated. Copy that, paste it, remove WebKit. There we go. We're going to go here and we're going to say width and we're going to do 100% and max width 640. So it's basically always 600 and uh, a maximum of 640, but under that it will be 100%. Basically responsive styles. Pointer events, none and opacity zero. Beautiful. Now what I'm going to do is style the modal when the input is checked. So now it's hidden, you can't see it. So now let's do something when you can see it. Type of checkbox, the checked state, the general sibling combinator, but we're gonna style the modal this time. Pointer events, auto, opacity one. We're gonna do WebKit transform, and we're gonna say translate. We're gonna position that. Uh, it's gonna be the same as this, so I'm just gonna copy that and paste it out but the scale is going to be one. We want that to actually grow to its full size so it doesn't look silly. And now we're going to do some transitions. We're going to transform 0.5 seconds, ease, and the opacity at 0.5 seconds and ease. Copy that. Uh, sorry, no, I don't need to copy that. Yes, I do for the WebKit. There we go. That looks good. So the transition will, will, will transition the transform and the opacity. So that means that those specific things will animate. If I didn't specify that, it would not affect, uh, it would not animate the transform or it would not animate the opacity. You can actually animate the position and other elements as well, other states. And now we're going to do a transition delay. 0.1 seconds and that's just going to wait 0.1 seconds before it animates just to give it like a little bit of a cascading effect and one last thing we're going to just style up the modal double underscore content and we're going to say display block we're going to give it some padding of 30 pixels and a background of white or triple f save that check it out in the browser refresh click on your click to launch modal there it is, it opens up, the modal is there, the close button, if we click it, closes everything back out. Check this out, when I click it, watch that the overlay comes first and then 0.1 seconds later, the modal pops up. So it's very subtle, but check it out. It just has a nice... Creepy. That was very good. Thank you for hanging out with me on number 16, day number 16, modal window. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope this gave you a few ideas to use on your own websites and applications. Perhaps build some CSS only modal windows in your own projects. It's a very functional thing. It's something that you can use. It's cross browser compatible. It's just CSS, so it should work everywhere for the most part. So enjoy, have a good day. I'll see you tomorrow in day number 17. Da 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 da